you know, I just didn't know what was ahead of me. You know, when I was with Prince and I'm rapping on stage and there's a big audience out there and, you know, I'm thinking like, at that time, like, how could life get any better than that? You know what I'm saying? You got the girls, you got Prince on, on the right, George Clinton's on the left, and you're like, what else could it be, you know? But I remember at one point when I had a young student that was graduating from high school and they were the only person in their family to graduate from high school and their grandmother was there. She was crying, their mother was crying. It was like unbelievable and I thought to myself, I said, you know, this feels better than that did, you know? So it was like, you know, it was real fulfilling to, to be transformed to get the opportunity to do something to help kids that I realized were like me. We started out as a pilot with just like 10 or 15 kids and then after we seen how well it was um, engaging young people and getting them going, we created an official charter school. From there we grew to where we are now. We have 200 students enrolled. We have a program that is aligned with the state standards. Over 70% of our students graduate with their high school diploma. You know, we're able to work with, you know, all the kids in the community from different gangs, different nationalities, it doesn't matter. They all um, swarm and gather around the phenomena of music. Hey, what's goody Twin Cities? It's your favorite white boy, Lost Cause, and I'm here with the Faux Show Top Faux Countdown, where we play the four hottest hits from students at HSRA, Another Level Enterprises, and students worldwide. Now, if you don't know what the Faux and the Faux Show stands for, I'm gonna let you know what it is. And that's family, respect, community, and education. Now, we have a special show for y'all this week. This is the open school when I um, first was exposed to a community learning center model and, and hands-on, you know, um, experiential learning was in that building right there. That was the school I think that really transformed me and saved my life with regards to being a young uh, man you know, growing up in the environment that I was in. I got kicked out of all the other schools, you know, and I really, I wasn't really interested in school at all at the time. I was just like, um, you know, into what was happening in the street, you know, and hustling. And so, um, with that mentality, I ended up going there. And basically it was, it was cool, you know, I, I mean, really no one hassled me in the sense, in the way that I had experienced in the traditional school. They were more like, um, they were nurturing, they would kind of try and poke me, you know, get me to get involved in different activities or things that they had. You know, the miracle of that opportunity from um, Protect Your Rights and Money class came into my life and I had a, a, a teacher that kind of connected with me and, and, and got me involved in that and then it just kind of raised my antennas and I was like, okay, this is something I can use, you know what I mean? This, this is how you stay out of trouble. This is how you understand how to protect yourself from the system that I was angry with. The frustration of, you know, the traditional school kind of made me feel like a failure, but in my mind, I knew that I had what it took. I was just, you know, it's like it is now, you know. Traditional school, I think, works for like about, you know, maybe 50% of the kids that are, are learners, you know. They, they may learn that style, but the other 50%, you know, doesn't work for them. After I left the open school, I got my pilot license. I um, was just able to really realize anything basically that I wanted to do. I had the confidence and I believed that, 
you know, if I wanted to do it and I would study it and understand it, that I could accomplish it. It just, that was the, that was the gift that I got from that school learning. It wasn't, it wasn't memorizing nothing for a test. It wasn't any of those types of things, but it was just the confidence and understanding what I really possessed and what I needed to be able to be a good citizen and, and, and a problem solver and a lifelong learner. Those were the, the um, values that were instilled in me from that project. That's the house I grew up in. And this was my neighborhood. This is the Fuller Block, which is, which is known, you know, it's pretty notorious. All my best friends lived right around here in the alley. Now, one of the guys that I used to um, work with, with Prince, he lived right up the alley. His name was um, Gilbert. He became Prince's bodyguard. After Prince was, was you know, getting big in the music business, I was, I was bugging him all the time about letting me do the hip hop thing. I wanted him to cut me a break, give me a contract, let me in, right? The next time I seen Prince, we were in the club and Prince actually called me over to him. He was like, TC, come here, man, I gotta talk to you. So I reminded Prince, I said, well, Prince, you remember when Coles was fixing to kick your ass at the Fox Trap? I said, who was taken up for you then? Before you had all these bodyguards and stuff, right? And he was like, oh, oh, what, what, what? Do I owe you? How much? He started like, like he was going in his pocket. I was like, you don't owe me nothing. I said, just open up the door, man. Let me get it. I get it myself. You know what I'm saying? Just, you know, let me in. And so he was like, he told me, he said, well, that was then and this is now. And he just did his little strut. He walked off, right? So I was like, okay. You know, so I was like, cool. So, but at the same time while he was doing that, I was working on the Batman. I did this rap about Batman because Miko, who was playing guitar for Prince, he was watching the dailies and stuff of the Batman movie because they were doing the music for the soundtrack. And he was telling me what the movie was about. So I wrote this rap called the Bat Rap. I said, this is the rap about the bat. Batman, that is, the one in black, like a bat out of hell. He will reveal, screaming down the road in the Batmobile, heading for the crime, only to find nothing but a riddle. You know a rhyme, Jack be nimble, Jack be quick, Jack jump over the candlestick. You know, and I told the story about the movie, you know, and so I rushed that out and I put it out myself. And, and, I, and I released it and so, from what I understand, Warner Brothers was like asking Prince, who is this dude that got the Batman record out and he's from your hometown and he knows what the movie's all about, right? And so they wanted to, I guess they were looking, they wanted to talk to me about it or, 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 or figure out who I was and what, what was going on. He, um, Prince, that was when he finally contacted me. He was like, yo man, why don't you come out here to Paisley and bring your stuff? We're going to record something. You know what I'm saying? So then I went out there and we started doing my album the same night. See, this here rap's about the true confession. If you listen close, you're about to learn a lesson. You must know failure before success. Now, this is the failure, I must confess. I was hanging on the street trying to deal with this. Playing the games almost got dismissed. Cocaine was a thing that I took on, and nowhere was the place that I was going. Now, I must tell the truth. I cannot lie. I was headed for the kill, steal, destroy, and die. From the top to the bottom, the bottom to the top. Success is where I'm headed, there ain't no doubt. Success is something that we all want, but the truth is what you need to reach that point. It's a true confession. You check it out for your protection, the true confession. It was still a blessing because, you know, I got a contract. I was with Warner Brothers. I got to travel all over the world. I um, got to perform with Prince. I performed with George Clinton. A lot of tremendously great artists and musicians through, you know, my career with him, so. And it opened up the opportunity to do what I'm doing now, which is the high school for recording arts. And this is where I discovered the school at. It was downtown in St. Paul. See these walkways that connect all these buildings? This is called the um, Skyway system. Well, 
in the winter time, it's really cold. So that's, that's how people get around downtown. And all the kids that are ditching school, that's where they hang out, in the skywalks. And they get food and they talk and walk around and rap. And all the kids that were ditching school, basically hanging out in the skywalk, they would come to my studio and they were um, basically asking me and begging me, let, you know, let them get into the studio so they could show me what they could do because they was like the next hottest thing. Kind of like how I was doing prints, they were doing me, you know, and I was busy. I had clients and stuff and I was like, no, nah, you know, I got somebody coming. I got a, uh, a session fixing to start and I just was blowing them off, right? Eventually one day, some clients didn't show up and they called me out on that. They were like, see, I thought you had somebody coming. Ain't nobody here. I let them in the studio. I just wanted to see what was happening. They just blew me away with how good they were. I mean, they were like, I was like, wow. You know, they were hot, you know? And so then they start asking me right away, how do you copyright this? And so I was telling them, you know, you, well, you gotta go to the library and, get the PA or the SR and fill that out and send it to the Library of Congress and then you know you'll get a copyright certificate. They were like, what's the PA? What's the SR? You know, I'm so I'm like, well that's performing arts, sound recording. You know, you gotta and so there so then they start calling me up, wanting to know everything that I knew about the music business. And so that was where I got the idea. I was like, how come y'all ain't at school? You know what I'm saying? And at the same time, I'm thinking, they're like, forget school. You know, they don't want, they weren't interested. And so I'm, I thought back to my experience in school as a um, coming up, I'm like, those skills will all transfer into anything. That's when I got the idea. I called up um, my old principal from the open school, Dr. Wayne Jennings. He was opening up charter schools. And I called him up and I said, hey, I got like 10 kids of like hanging out at my studio every day. And they're smart, you know. They, you know, people would think they're like thugs, you know, cause their pants are hanging down and they're rapping and, you know, walking through the skyway, you know. But really, they were like, they were smart, they could write, they were motivated to, to, to do what they wanted to do. And so he came by and visited. He said, okay, he said, that's a good idea. You know, he said, I'll tell you what. He said, let's enroll the kids in the charter school that I have, but they don't have to come to the school. We'll just have them come to your studio. And after about a couple months, there was like 50 kids on the waiting list, you know, wanting to get in this program and just spread word of mouth. Oh, my life, I've been struggling. I think that music really is the pathway to freedom. It's like a miracle. It gives these kids the ability to transform from what is maybe a depressed state or a suppressed situation that they're living in. And that is like a therapy. You know, I mean, it's it's that's really what it is. I think I think it really is. It's like water. You know, we're working with students who are on a journey of their life, and so we're trying to give them an opportunity to become better citizens and better people. And so part of that process is being tolerant and trying to understand what they're dealing with because most of the young people that I'm dealing with are coming from crazy, chaotic family systems and communities that have really let them down. And so their trust level and their ability to, to really do what some educators may see as appropriate they don't have the coping skills. You know, they're coming to school, they're hungry, they're angry, they got issues, and before I can really deliver the education, I have to work with them to help them learn how to cope and give them some of the um, 
nurturing that they need, which is positive interaction with an adult. I think that that, as far as the development of a student, is so important. It's more important, I think, really than anything else. It takes time for the student to get involved and buy into the, what we're doing, and then that's when the real you know, learning starts and, and the relationship is built and the, and the, you know, bridge is sturdy. You know, we're crossing back and forth. So it's, um, it's a challenge. It's a lot, it's a lot of work. And if you think that you can live my life and walk in my shoes Verse 3, he striped out what? Now he may be cause that boy just put his lights out huh? And he can't think and function cause his brain is shut down Damn. And now he thinking all the things he could've changed around Now he fighting now She be on earth or should he be under the dirt But black ass don't see no me, black ass can't defeat When black ass don't speak no me, black ass can't compete That's just me, he seek, the next judgment is he How you gonna pin check he when you haven't pin check D Now you all from the streets and black ass in needs cause you test the key, the key to decease, the key to relief, the key is we. We who think about knowledge, power, never thinking about saving and helping. So all of you people teach your kids something different before they end up on the same boat, missing. Life.